Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back. Feng Shui. I'm sure you've heard that term before and have sort of a feeling of what it means. Placement of certain things brings you a better life outcome, whether it's relationships, prosperity, good luck, good fortune, all of that. We are going to talk about Feng Shui today. How is it? relates to interior design and she's back with us uh always learn so much from marcia moore welcome how you doing i am doing great so feng shui how would you define what it means so this is an ancient um, chinese practice that's been around for thousands of years and it's uh the use of energy in order to create harmonious environments that's like the simple simple way of looking at it energy is in everything is energy and you can either uh, negative. It can be negative energy or it can be positive energy, and we want your home to be all positive energy. Hmm. So when we talk about that, is it reasonable to think if you put something in a certain spot, you'll have a more favorable favorable outcome as opposed to putting it someplace else? Yes, that's um, a little bit delving in a little bit deeper into feng shui is a placement of things, and it's all about uh, there's a what's called a Bagua map, which is what you follow for how to place things and wh what areas of your home uh, relate to what part of your life. So the Bagua map has nine squares in it and you relate it to a certain way to your home, like the, 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 the bottom of the Bagua map is where your front door is and then it, it spreads from there as to where all those different squares relate to your home. And one square will be about abundance. One will be about relationships. One is about your family. One is about your work. So there's all different kinds of things. And you relate the, the feng shui in that area to help you have more abundance or to help you have a better relationship. Do you practice this in your designs? I do. I am not. I will be the first one to say I am not a feng shui practitioner. It takes years and years and years to get all the knowledge and to note exactly what you're doing there. But there's a lot of simple things that I incorporate all the time. The, um, the easiest place for me to do it is in a primary bedroom or master bedroom. Let's start there. Okay. Yeah. Let's what, so, what should we be mindful of there? Okay. So the primary bedroom is all about the people who live there. So if you are in a relationship, let's start with somebody assuming you have a relationship, somebody lives with you. So you want to make sure that you have an equal partnership, not somebody has more power and the other person has no power. So the easiest way to do that in your primary bedroom is your nightstands should be exactly the same, equal nightstands. The lamp on it should be exactly the same. If somebody has a bigger nightstand, that gives them more power. That's the general principle of it. Does that also <laughs> count for bigger closets? <laughs> I don't think we can go that far because <laughs> every every home I know has one bigger closet and one smaller closet. And, so. <laughs> and somebody gets it. Somebody's got to get it. Yeah. Hmm. So um, so that's like the start in, in, in your primary bedroom. In every bedroom, you should have nothing under your bed, no clutter under your bed. In every room, clutter is negative energy. So no clutter is positive energy. Um, but also in your master bedroom, it should all be about the couple. So pictures on the wall should be the two of you, not your kids, not your pets, not your rest of your family, nothing else. If you don't have pictures, if you're a single person and you want a relationship, then these same principles hold true. You should have equal nightstands that invites somebody else into you as an, an equal partner. Oh. You should have pictures that are doubles of something or pairs even if it's not, you know, a picture of a man and woman or two men or two women, it should be pairs like two flower pictures. So everything is pairs because that's what the relationship is. And then um, <clears throat> the other thing you can do uh, is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I just lost my train of thought. I'll, I'll give you a story. I had a, a single woman that I was working with had a beautiful, we did a beautiful bedroom for her. She had this awesome painting that she had in her bedroom. It, I love the painting, but it was of a single woman. And then she also had the uh, cremated remains of two dogs that she kept in her room. 
And I'm like, you want a relationship, but you're everything you're doing is negating the fact that you want a relationship. You can't have a single woman in your room and think that you're going to have a relationship. You shouldn't have dead dog remains in your bedroom. They put them somewhere else. The other thing you can do is have room in a drawer and room in a closet where it's where there's nothing. So you are inviting someone into your space. You have room in, for them in your space. So have an empty drawer in your dresser, have a, a, a few, you know, feet of empty closet space. And that's how you invite somebody into your life. Wow. Um, to the point of the cremated remains, I've heard that you shouldn't even have them in your home. Yeah. But especially not in your bedroom. <laughs> especially so. And I yeah. forget what it is. It's um, just... Even though your your intent is 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 very nice uh, to remember somebody, mm -hmm. it's just the energy, uh, you know. Right. Ac according to a Chinese principle, feng shui principles, it's just yeah, correct. Not a good idea. You can though. bury them in a garden outside, and then put a, you know grow a plant on top of each one of them in order to remember them. Not in not in your house. Gotcha. The same holds true with uh, plants that are not in good shape that are dying. Or, or you know, look like they're they're on death's door. The, if you're going to have live plants in your house, they need to be healthy, because that's good energy. When when we talk about while well, we're, we're still in the bedroom, placement of things, um, direction bed should face, things like that. There are um, yes, that is like above my pay grade. <laughs> I'm not familiar with all of that, so. And in many rooms, you don't have a choice. There's only one good wall to place a bed. So that's normally where we place it. And I don't have to worry about what's the best feng shui wall for it because I don't have any choices. Hmm. Okay, gotcha. Um, any other thoughts before we change rooms? Um, let me make sure. Oh, mirrors. This is uh, true for everywhere, but especially in a, in a bedroom. You don't want to be able to see a mirror from your bed. That's like inviting spirits into your room. So um, you don't have want a mirror. If you, if you have a mirror that's behind a door and you can't see it, or it's on the wall um, that's behind your bed, that's fine. But you don't want to be able to see it from your bed. Hmm. I, I got rid of the mirror. Yeah. I, I don't have any in mine either. Isn't that interesting? I, I, I don't know what I moved and there was a separate piece and I wanted to put the TV where the mirror would be. Cause the mirror is above mm -hmm. the, um, uh, above the dresser. Exactly. And yeah. I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? I don't need the mirror. I could just walk into the bathroom. I'm fine. Get, mm -hmm. get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, actually, somebody bought it. <laughs> made some cash off it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I, I think I told you I just bought a house recently. Yes. And the master bedroom has um, it's an entire wall of mirrored closet doors. Four mirrored closet doors. So I have to get rid of those. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Wait, I th the phone's ringing. I, I'm, it's the '80s calling. Wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. It's when it was built. <laughs> Why do things like that change? Because in theory, it's a, it seems like a great idea, but and maybe you know maybe it felt good back in the day, but now when you see it, it's just like no, 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 no. Why, right. why does that change? Why does the feeling change? So I think everything that comes about at for some and in some way is a good idea. I mean, it, it makes a, a small room look bigger. That's a great reason to have mirrors. Sure. And then you don't have to find a, a place to put a stand up full length mirror to look at yourself, you know, when you're getting dressed, it's on the door. So there were, were reasons that made sense, but I don't want to stare at myself every time I get out of bed. <laughs> you know, that's just way too much mirror. Yeah. So. And, and, but the, the other half of it is if you want to have a mirror, it's going to take up floor space or wall space and the door right. is a door. You need to have a door, a yeah. closet door. Yeah. So in, in theory, it sounds like a great idea, but uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Or isn't it funny how our tastes change? Right. And I think that's good. You know, if we, if our taste didn't change, we would become stagnant. If nothing was ever new, we'd become stagnant and that yeah. that's what's stagnant, but bad energy. Gotcha. Uh, let's, let's go to some other simple tips. So another, well, let's, let's stay with the mirrors for uh, right now. So you shouldn't have a mirror directly across from your front door or a directly across from a window, because this is all about the flow of chi or energy. So if energy is coming into your house from the front door, then it's coming, going right back out because it bounces out from the mirror. So you're negating energy um, coming into your home. So hmm. 
not a good place for mirror. Gotcha. And the same would hold true if you have a picture right across from you that's got um, glass on it and the glass reflects. So if you want to have a picture right across from your door, you need to have museum glass on it, which doesn't reflect, doesn't have any uh, uh, reflection. Wow. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> we, we're, learning. <laughs> we're learning stuff here. Uh, if we, if we use the, the map that you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. there's, you said nine different grids. Yeah, there's nine different grids. And if so if you think of where your front door is, if you're standing in your front door looking in your house, that's the bottom of the grid. So there's three grids across, and then another three, and then another three. So the very, let's say the very back of your house from your front door, the back right of your house is your relationship grid. The very back left is your power, wealth, abundance grid. So if you're standing at your front door, the one directly to your right is your travel and helpful people grid. The one directly to your left is knowledge and wisdom and harmony. So those are, you know, the, all of those different grids relate to a different aspect of your life. So that's standing, entering your place and standing at the front door and then looking to the left, looking to the right. That's what we're talking about, right? Correct. Uh huh. What if you have a foyer like I do? The foyer doesn't matter. It's which which way the door faces. So if you walk in your front door and you're facing east, then that's the way the whole map faces. If you walk in your door and you have to turn to get into the room because of a foyer, you know, you come into your foyer, but then you have to turn to get into the rest of the house. That doesn't matter. It's which way that door actually faces. Hmm. So, so it my, doesn't matter if the door is on one end of the house or in the very middle or one third. It doesn't matter where it is. It's just that that line, that starting line, that side of the house where your door is, is the start of it, of the map. So essentially mine faces, as an example, south, maybe a little southeast. So how would the mm -hmm. grid turn for that? So it, the grid just, if you have the grid in your hand, and the top of the paper is the back of your home and the bottom of the paper is your front door. So that's how you do it, no matter which way it's facing. Okay. When you walk in your door, you, you don't turn, you're just walking directly in your door, then that is the way the map faces. So what was that again, the back end of your place, the left and the right? The left back is power, wealth, and abundance. And the back right is love, marriage, and relationships. Hmm. And how would that translate to what you do inside your home? So um, let's do talk about love, marriage, and relationships. That is a number two. So everything in pairs, because that's that's um, what we think of as relationships as pairs. Mm -hmm. So it's also there's different elements that you use. Like there's um, uh, uh, different colors that go with each each part of that. So the color for marriage and relationships is red or pink. So you would incorporate something that's red or pink. It doesn't mean that that whole space has to be red or pink. You just incorporate maybe you have two little um, pink crystals. So that's a pair of pink crystals that you would put in that space. And that, that helps with that area. And then there's a, there's, there are, um, um, Five elements. The five elements are wood, metal, fire, earth, and water. Those are all the, the elements of, of our physical environment. So the element that goes along with relationships is fire. If you think of, you know, when you first start a relationship, it's very fiery. So, um, well, yeah, so I wanted to share at that at this point that the left side facing to the back of my place is a fireplace. <laughs> So I guess it would it would have served better if they put the fireplace on the right side. <laughs> well, and yeah, the left side of my house is my is my master bedroom, not the right side. <laughs> so, uh, right, right. Uh, your, your bedroom doesn't have to be in the in the um, in the love and relationship area sure. of the house. So the other thing that you can do as a little aside with feng shui is you can use feng shui in a room. You can use the same concept as you use for a home, but just do it in a room. So if you're like my master bedroom is not in my in my love and relationship area, but I can incorporate all of those uh, two things into that corner of that room. 
the right far far right corner of that room from when it, where the room door is. So you use the same grid in a sm on a smaller scale. You can use the same grid on your desk at work in order to um, help you with your, your work life. Mm. When you're doing a design for somebody, are you keeping these principles yeah, somewhat loosely but in your mind, but it, it's, it's there? Yeah, it's loosely. I mean, I, I, as I say, I, I, there is so much of it that I don't know, but I definitely keep in mind the things uh, that I've told you about a primary bedroom or not putting a mirror away uh, us, um, right, in, right inside a door. Um, and there's a few other things that, sure. that I, you know, keep in my head, but yeah, it's, what? there's so much that I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I have runs deep. Oh my gosh. When I, I talked to somebody a couple of years ago that does feng shui, but also Chinese astrology and my head was spinning. It was yeah. just like, she was spitting yeah. stuff out. Um, and she, she looked at, you know, but she did my chart, uh, mm -hmm. for the Chinese astrology right on target. I'm like, whoa, whoa okay. Um, it is fascinating. It really is. Yeah. How about, how about some other um, quick tips? Anything that um, stands out that we haven't hit up? So an easy way for you to start with feng shui is the entrance to your home. So the entrance to your home in feng, uh, feng shui is considered the mouth of your home. So it needs, it's the first thing everybody sees. So it needs to be a free of clutter. <clears throat> free of clutter is huge in feng shui because yeah. Clutter is bad energy, and if you start your home with bad energy, that better, bad energy flows into your home as opposed to a clutter-free entry is good energy flow, flowing into your home. So clutter-free, it needs to be well-lit, clean, inviting, all those things that you would normally think of that even without feng shui, that you want people to be to feel invited into your home and welcome there. So you have a nice welcome mat. You have a couple of plants next to it and same you know when you get inside you don't have all your shoes lined up that you take off when you come into the your house that should be you know put that in your mudroom that shouldn't be at the front of your house so that being said i'm thinking about putting pictures in the hallway as you enter my place so there's a foyer there and i've never i've never put them up i moved mm -hmm. literally exactly two years ago and uh i still haven't done it what would be best supporting left, right type of pictures. So is your hallway, you know, like you, you come in and you have to go down a hallway to get to the rest of your house? Correct. I mean, it's not, not, not exactly, but the bulk of the house is through the hallway. But as you enter immediately on your right-hand side is a door, that's a home office, left-hand side, uh, laundry room, area there's and then you know extreme left quick left would be entrance to the garage um, mm. but you'd have to go down that hallway and eventually you, you hit the kitchen living room right okay so that hallway is going through different um grids of the map as you get to the back of the house mm. so if it's the middle of your is your door in the middle of the house pretty much the door the uh, door you mean the front door yeah, it's it's in the it's in the it's essentially really the front of the house. No, it's the front of the house, but is it in the middle of that plane, or is it on one? You know? Um, it's more so on the right side, if you will. Okay, so if it's probably straddling two two different grids, the one the the very right would be compassion, travel, and helpful people, which that's where that home office would be if that's the en end of your home. Um, and the very middle of the front is self, career, and work. So that that part of the map is black and white things, and squiggly lines, and things like that. So you could, if you had black and white frames, or black and black frames and white pictures, or pictures with white white uh, maps on them, that would work well. Hmm. But because you are going through different grids. The center grid is um, well-being and balance, and that's that's a that's yellow. So um, you know you, you're going through different things. So I don't think I would worry about it. Okay. I would just put what looks good. Gotcha. And it's I do have frames left from uh, my previous place that have uh, they're white. They're white. Yeah, they're white frames. So you're so saying put those close to your front door. Close. To, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and. and I actually have them in a in a drawer in a closet, and uh, there's 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 things on them, but I never put them up. So I think yeah, that's, that's it's time. 
So what I would suggest is you um, go on Google and just type in Bagua map. It's spelled B as in boy, A-G-U-A map. And a bunch of them will come up and just find the one that, that looks the easiest to follow. And then you can start from there. And that's, that's the easy way to, to understand it and be able to grid out your home. So with the, the time we have left, any, any final thoughts that we should be aware of when it comes to, to feng shui? So feng shui, um, to me, it's all about having a harm, harmonious and balanced life. And if you don't have any time to do anything else or don't really get into feng shui at all, clutter is the best thing you can do for yourself in order to have positive energy in your home is to get rid of all the clutter, the clutter everywhere. That's, that's just huge. We all get, I mean, my house gets cluttered. And as soon as I pick it all up and it, everything's in its place, I just feel so much better. And that's, that's like the start, starting point of feng shui is clutter. It's interesting how many of us will clean things up and then feel that feeling of, ah, oh, yeah, so much better now. And we don't know why, but we know mm -hmm. it feels yeah. better. Yeah, and it does feel better. I, I spoke with an energy healer recently who who truly believes that the reason we are messy, have cluttered, disorganization is not because we're just messy. It's because it's our response to trauma in our past, whether it's big trauma, little trauma, mm -hmm. most of it from being a kid, which if you look deeper into right. it, sits in our subconscious and pilots us later in life. Yep. Um, but it's her belief that, yeah, all of that, you're doing it for a reason. It's not, it's not just like, right. oh, I just walked right. in, I'm going to drop this here. You're dealing with stuff, you, and well, you need to deal with it. Yeah, to <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're not dealing with that. that's you're why you got the corner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but interesting, you know. I don't know if it gives a, a lot of us a pass for you know some saying, "Well, I'm a mess, I'm a slob," but there's a reason it goes back. Yeah, um, yeah. It's kind of getting you know, getting a little woo woo here, but uh, same thing with feng shui. You know, there's there's mm -hmm. principles that you know work. Yeah, a lot of people, at least here in the Midwest, I have a lot of people who just don't want to even hear about it. It's just too much out of their comfort zone. So sometimes I will we'll talk about that, these things without even saying the words feng shui so that I can, you know, they'll understand the equal nightstands in a bedroom that that just looks better. Yeah. And so I get the point across without even bringing it up. And then other people are fine with it and really ready to embrace it and, um, you know, learn more about it. My feeling is if you have two spots where you can put your bed or a couch and one could give you a better outcome for whatever your goal is, why not just put it there? You know, if, yeah. it, if it doesn't yeah. matter. And the same mm -hmm. thing with, you know, as uncomfortable as it may be, you know, cremated remains. Um, you're not the first to say this. So, you know, not, not good to have them in your, in your home, find another right. place, w whatever you decide to do. But if you mm -hmm. adhere to feng shui, that's, I, I hear it all the time that it's just not, not the best thing for you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. I, th I think it's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. It was fascinating. Yeah. And the more I get into it, the more I enjoy it. And, and yeah. I, I realize how much it's helped me because I've had a feng shui, a real feng shui practitioner come and do my home, uh, my previous home and, and my previous office. And it was uh, really helpful. Everything mm. that they, they taught, taught me about it. Yeah. And this is not something that just came up in the last 30 years. This has been around for centuries. Thousands yeah, of years. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so cool. Marsha, how do we find you? If somebody's got a question about design, placement, whether it's feng shui related or not, how do they find you? MarshaMoreDesign.com. Marsha is spelled M-A-R-C-I-A-M-O-O-R-E. Design, singular, no S on the end, dot com. And you can, uh, there's phone numbers and uh, a way to contact me off of that website. Awesome. Uh, love the topic. Next time we get together, we're going to take a look at some projects on screen yeah. and uh, kind of yeah. dissect those and uh, looking forward. Thanks again. Thank you. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world. This is the podcast business news network. Hey dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. 
Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.